Welcome to State of the City. My name is Todd Prafke and I'm the City Administrator here in St. Peter's. Thanks for clicking on my vlog, my video blog. Um, you know, my goal is to do this about every other week, usually after workshop, and um, this week is no exception. Um, so I have two main missions today. Um, today is October 21st. Is to give you a little bit of an update about some of the discussion at the Council Workshop from on Monday the 19th. You can see the agenda there right in front of you. I'm trying to hold it very still so you can read it. Um, and then to talk about a few tidbits, this, that, and the other thing that uh, might be of value to you as you live, work, or play here in St. Peter. So let me get started. First of all, Recreation Leader Services Department presentation. Jane Timmerman, who's our department director there, was there at the council meeting. And, and um, it's a regular event for department heads to come at least once a year and talk about what, really whatever's important to them within their department. This is their opportunity to share with the city council something that might be outside of kind of the normal grinded out business of things that have to go on as a part of the city organization. Um, Jane spent some time focusing and talking on some of the summer programming and some of the utilization numbers. So if you want to see some of that information, you can go to our website and look up this packet from October 19th, and you'll be able to see some of the utilization data from the summer that's in there. Um, it's really interesting, and certainly some of the numbers are uh, change over time because the kind and the number of programs that we offer changes over time, but it can give you some great trend lines and great information about the level of activity that we have during the summer, which by any measure is a lot and there's a lot of things going on with youth and others within our community over the summer months. She additionally focused on um, what we commonly now call the Senior Center and the great agreement that we have with the county and with Sylvia Perrin who's been our Senior Director for a long time um, since LaVon Campbell uh, retired and then passed away. Um, you know, uh, one of the challenges that I think we face in relation to senior programming is that um, the nature of what is being pre-retired, retired, and part-time retired has changed dramatically over the last 15 or 20 years. And so St. Peter, along with many, many other communities, are kind of grappling with, well, what, what are those folks looking for and and we used to be able to define those seniors in a very small bucket of stuff and now seniors means everything from 56 years old to 95 years old with so many different varying levels of activity and interests and and um, God, this is a terrible way maybe to think about it but seniors are just like us <laughs> and, and uh, they have all kinds of different things that they're interested in doing and the council and certainly Jane and I see this um, as being one of the roles in our community to keep our community vibrant is to provide a framework for seniors to have um, experience, experiential activities and opportunities within our community. And so it's not just playing um, 500 anymore, although that's great. It's not just playing Pfeffer anymore. Um, it's not some of those things that 10 years ago we thought as being traditional senior activities. There are so many more things like pickleball and all kinds of learning and educational opportunities that, that we want to continue to see grow and expand within our community just as our senior population expands. So so Jane was really talking about, God, we're going to see some changes in the near future. We're going to see potentially some changes in personnel within the next year or two. And God, we kind of have to start planning again and really focusing or maybe going back to 2008, 2009 when we did some work around a program or a project that we called the Vital Living Project. And a number of folks within our community participated in that. Gene Anderson, um, Pastor Bogenschutz, um, I'm trying to think of who else. We had a lot of folks participate in that. Um, kind of visioning opportunity for what we can do with seniors and so we're kind of going to go back to the future or the future back to the past however we want to put that together and really focus on some of that vital living initiative activity and some of the priorities that were set there as kind of a starting point for us to look forward as we're planning into the future so look forward to that I'm really excited about that opportunity and um, what we can do as a community to enhance um, lives to really continue to talk about what does it mean to have a livable community? Um, other things that the council talked about. The council talked about potentially um, some land acquisition, continuing to talk about that roundabout near McDonald's and um, Holiday. Not that we have to build a roundabout today. I want to be really clear. We're not building a roundabout today or next year or maybe even the year after. Development has to occur a little bit more before we go forward on that. But 
Um, we do have all of the land uh, ready except for one small piece um, which is on what most people commonly refer to as the CarQuest property. Uh, by the way, CarQuest doesn't own that. It's owned by National Retail Development, I think, or National Retail, who owns thousands of parcels of property throughout the United States and rents them to folks like CarQuest and others. So anyway, there's a lot of discussion about that going on. Um, the next item that you'll see on there is, a, it says, DeWild Grant Rickert Distributed Generation Project. Um, DeWild Grant Rickert is um, our engineer, our electric engineer, and they do a lot of work for us on our electric system. And one of the things that's going on now is we're seeing, and we love to see this, a proliferation of alternative energy within our community. And so we have folks that are now putting solar panels on their roof which is wonderful. Um, we think that's great. We have requirements for conservation that we have to meet as an electric utility, and so we love to see those kind of things happen because it helps us meet those requirements. But one of the challenges that we see is that um, oftentimes with these installations on a roof, um, somebody might generate, let's say, 100 kilowatt hours, but they only use 80 kilowatt hours. And so what they want to do is sell their 20 kilowatt hours to the rest of us and put it out on the system. The wire that goes between all the houses and businesses in town and they want to push that out there. And so that's cool, but there need to be some standards for how, from an electrical engineering standpoint, all that stuff fits together. Um, there also needs to be some standards for how do they pay their share of transporting the electricity that they generated on their roof through everyone else's wires. And how does that work? So there's some finance and some legal and some other issues that have to be addressed as a part of that. And so DGR, who is an expert in this kind of in, in the electric industry, is going to help us. Well, we're going to ask the council to allow them to help us take a look at this. The cost is around five to seven thousand seventy five hundred dollars to do some of the study work that needs to go on as a part of this. And so this will help us know what to do into the future and help give additional data to the city council as they make decisions. Um, it's, it's usually better to know more than less, and so this is one of those ways that, that we're going to try and work to know more about what's going on and how we can make all this process work together. Now, I just have a bunch of tidbits of information that I want to get out to there, <clears throat> one of which is on Monday we had uh, the groundbreaking with the school district. So here's kind of a picture. Uh, i got to get this working. Um, we were right out in this area. Um, with the groundbreaking on the new school and park facility. So again, we continue to be excited about that and a great turnout. Dusty out there. Dusty, dusty, dusty out there. Um, but it was a great afternoon and a wonderful celebration at the community center of the school district's 150th um, anniversary. So excited about that. I do want to mention the pause walk um, is going on. So the pause walk is a fundraiser that generates money for shelter and medical care for animals that are lost abandon or show up on our doorsteps and so it's a wonderful cause and so we encourage all animal lovers whether you own an animal or not to get out there and participate in the pause walk and raise money for that very uh, important cause um, we also want to mention firefighter applications fighter fighter applications are going on right now and we're going to be looking for five new firefighters to really start schooling in the 2016 year and so there's a wonderful process that the fire department goes through for selecting those firefighters. Um, there's, there's certainly some agility things and other things that you have to pass to make sure you have to be have a high school diploma or GED. There's some minimum qualifications. Um, but they have an open house on November 5th from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock. November 5th from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock. So if you have interest, uh, and you, but you're not quite sure, you want to know more a little, a little bit more about what it takes, how many hours, what do you have to do, what's the training look like, have you ever been in a fire truck and you want to you know test that out first just a little bit that open house is a wonderful opportunity for you to go down and take a look for yourself uh, firefighters will be there help explain things um, give the, uh, experiential uh, information about what they went through how it works how it works with them and their families and, and we encourage you to bring down your significant others or your spouses to see because when when you're a volunteer firefighter in our community it not only affects what you do but it certainly affects your whole family so it's a great opportunity um, to get to know a little bit more about it and then you can submit an application or you can submit an application without that but it's a wonderful opportunity to know a little bit more about what's going on um, so anyway, we, we want to encourage folks to take advantage of that and really are looking for um, those folks that are interested in serving their community through being a volunteer firefighter. Leaf collection is coming up. Today is the 21st, but it starts on October 26th. Leaf collection. If you want more information, go to our website or the hot sheet. I won't go through all the details about how it all fits together, but we do certain segments of town, so watch for that. Don't put your leaves in the gutter. 
leave them on the boulevard, so on the grass, on right by the edge of the curb, not in the street, on the grass. And we come along with a great machine and suck a lot of them up, and um, it's really convenient for folks. Um, so anyway, watch for that. Get more information if you need it. I also want to mention Kirby placement. Oh, I forgot to pull out the picture of that. But remember, don't put Kirby's on the street. That's especially important when we are starting to do leaf pickup. And uh, I hate to even mention this, snow plowing. If your Kirby's on the street, it gets hit by snow plows. That's bad. <laughs> That's really bad. Well, next time I'll try and remember the picture. But Kirby's need to be up on the boulevard, not in the street, up on the boulevard. So please watch for that. Um, it helps everything go smoother and uh, saves a lot of wear and tear on you and your Kirby. And last but not least, remember we have a municipal and school district election on November 2nd. If you need to know where to vote, give us a call or visit the Secretary of State's office on the World Wide Web. They have great information about how to do that. But we really want to encourage people to get out there and vote on November 2nd. St. Peter has a great tradition of having a large percentage of its registered voters continue to vote. And so we love that. Um, that's what makes democracy work. So please exercise your right, your privilege, um, your duty um, to vote in local elections. We'd love to see you out there. Um, with that, that's it. Here's how you can get a hold of us. Email me at website, Facebook. We'd love it if you like us or give us a call. Thanks for clicking on State of the City. Have a great rest of the week.